this time in tradition with homecoming, we would like to introduce the seniors. From our halftime dancers, our color guard, and the marching band. Thank you for a great four years in making the halftime show the best in the state. Your seniors on the marching band. Perudi Alcindor. Cole Inaloro. Jackie Carroll. Asia Sheritakis. Emma Dinopoulos. Brett Harris. Wesley Homer. Lord Honoré. Isaiah Lacombe. Marvin's LaPointe. Kevin Martinez. Veronica Martins. Nicole Mejia. Sayana Mas Masmurray. Philip Milligan. Greg Minicello. Rachel Paz. Nicole Grouchy. Jose Rodriguez. Simon Schultz. Ryan Shaw, Emily Strain, Shane Swanton, Eddie Welch, Sarah Witherby, and Caden Donovan. Your seniors, marching band. And now your seniors, color guard, Dana Searcy, Amy Duong, and Michaela Florio. Your seniors, color guard. And now your seniors, halftime dancers, and captain, Courtney Sullivan. Now we'd like to introduce the seniors from our cheerleading squad. Your spirit and enthusiasm is what Boxer Nation is all about. Your captain, Zayana Andrade. Your captain, Alexia Montero. Kiaya Azenkoff. Dana Cunha, yes, Dana. Nyla Montero, yes, Ravina Rosa, yes, Angela Rusano, yes, and Victoria Von George. Yes, Finally, we'd like to introduce the senior members of our boxer football team. Remember, gentlemen, once a boxer, always a boxer. Your captains, Junior Montero. Captain, Nathaniel Derelis. Your captain, Jalen Ellaby Cundiff. Your captain, Dexter Cumberlander. Your captain, Dimitri Dornville. Josh Boards. Paul Mitchell. Thomas O'Brien. Rosie Pierre. Stanley Genty. Shannon Thomas. Worrell Mead. Sebastian Damis, Marcus Hansen, Curtis Reese, 
Jivinson, Verdal. Kobe, Paz. Josias, Roman. Devante, Offit. Ian Smith. Clayton, Barrows. Valentino, Mugatti. And Tim, Okinlola. Your seniors. Let's give them one round of applause, one last round of applause. Thank you again all for coming out tonight and enjoy the game. Please remember that there are several concession stands open this evening as well as opportunities to purchase official Brock and Boxer gear. Reminder during the game that no spectators are allowed on the field or allowed to stand at the fences. If you do wish to stand, you must be in the end zone area. You can also reserve a commemorative brick to be placed at the Andre Family Champions Park at the Rocky Statue here at Brockton High School. Those forms are available at the Brockton High School athletic table down near the south end zone. And also a reminder, after the game at 9.30 tonight at the Brockton High School Auditorium, they will be hosting the first annual Comedy Fund Razor. It will present Paul Nardizzi, who has been seen on Comedy Central, he's been on Conan O'Brien. Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, football fans of all ages, this is Armand Colombo Field at Rocky Marciano Stadium, where today it's the biggest game of the season for the boxers as the big three section of their schedule kicks off. It's the Durfee Hilltoppers and the Brockton Boxers here at the first ever homecoming for Brockton High School Athletics. As always, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and I'm joined alongside my broadcast partner tonight, Big Game Miles Jackson. Miles, the situation is this, Brockton, one and four. Three crushing losses to the Catholic Conference. They lose either one of the games against the big three. They're eliminated from playoff contention. The playoffs start tonight. Exactly, so I can't see why these Brockton players aren't motivated to the max, because they this is their first step to the playoffs. Like you said, if they gotta win. If they don't win, they're done. So I look for the boxes to come out of here really hyped up, a lot of enthusiasm. Let's hope that offensive line and defensive line can make a difference in the trenches, and uh, hopefully Brockton will be okay. Well, the Durfee Hilltoppers typically not a very competitive matchup, but they gave us a scare last year. They sure did. So Brockton can't come in here take the got take these guys lightly because they're playing at home. They got to come out and play with 100% enthusiasm. Their receivers must must catch the football this evening for some big plays and keep that ball out of uh, Durfee's offense. Well, the score of last week's matchup, 31 to nothing against the Severian Hawks. It was, uh, it was an ugly matchup. Yeah, it, it was ugly uh, all around, all facets of the, the football game, the special team, offense, the defense. Um, again, receivers wasn't catching the football. They had a pretty good running game but uh, you need more than just a running game to uh, beat these teams that, uh, that are on the Brockton High schedule. Special teams, a big issue for the boxers last week. The boxers are receiving the opening kickoff from the Hilltoppers. There were two blocked punts last week against the Durfee Hilltoppers. A fair catch on the five yard line. Uh, an nope. onside kick that wasn't, it was like, it wasn't really a pooch kick, but no boxer attempted to go for it. Exactly, that was a bizarre play. As you said, nobody went after the football, and that was just one of those type of games. All kinds of things was happening. This is Friday the 13th, so I look for the boxers to have a good game. Well, we're gonna have the first look at Jose Montero Jr. in the boxers offense, 15 pass attempts. 
15 pass attempts last week. Five completions, good for 41 yards. Five game cumulative totals. He's 33 of 80 for 553 yards along with five touchdowns. And we start with a two receiver set to give to Pierre Rosen who is going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. Bouncing to the outside and trying to turn the corner unsuccessful. Second and 10 for the boxers. Yeah, that's a nice job by the Durfee Hilltoppers front line to uh, plug up the hole that uh, our running back wanted to go through. But we'll see happen. Durfee doesn't have a big front line like Brockton, so Brockton really needs to come out and push these guys back. No excuse. Well, the rushing totals for the season. Jose Montero Jr. leading the attack on the ground. 53 carries, good for 296 yards. Rosen Pierre, 69 attempts for 365 yards, an average of 5.3. Jalen Ellerby Cundiff, only six carries out of the backfield, 131 yards, and the boxers might lean on Mr. Cundiff tonight. Yeah, he's a very key player on that offensive squad. And right there you had a legal procedure, left side of the offense, I believe it was the, uh, the tight end or the tackle that was over there that moved a little bit early. Pendleton backs him up at second and 15 for the boxers. End around give to Ellerby Cundiff, trying to turn the corner on the outside. He's back to the original line of scrimmage before being forced out of bounds. It'll be a third and about nine. Yeah, nice pursuit by the Durfee Hilltoppers on that play right there. Sweep over to the left. They're going to rule he was out of bounds after a gain of about three, so it'll be third and about 12 yards to go. And Brockton really, they don't want to put themselves in a position where third and long, because it just makes it tougher for the offense to get that first down. Montero Jr. back to pass, looking towards the near side, and he's going to be picked off. Ellerby Cundiff, the intended receiver, who made no move back towards the ball once he saw it was going to be underthrown, and he just watched that ball be get intercepted. Exactly. He should have went after the ball. He had time, as you'll see on the replay here, Matt. The receiver does a little down and out. It was the ball was thrown high in the air. And like you said, the receiver just kind of looked at the defensive player make the play. And surprisingly, that was uh, Cundiff, who Montero was trying to throw to. That is the first interception thrown by the boxer offense all year. And not the way the boxers were looking to start here on senior night, homecoming, packed house here at Marciano Stadium. Packed house. And tonight, off the uh, defense, Need to, needs to make some things happen. Fumble, interception, but they need something to happen, make something happen on that defensive uh, side. So first, uh, second and about nine, the ball's out. And it's gonna be a loss for the Hilltoppers. That'll be about a third and we'll call it 15. Yeah, Hill Hilltoppers in a similar boat. They can ill afford to make mistakes if they wanna have a chance to beat this um, boxer team tonight. You'll see here on the replay, just a, just a low snap. Yeah, quarterback didn't handle it. I think fullback was in motion. His knee might have caught that ball to knock it out of the quarterback's hands. So it's a third and a long for the Hilltoppers in trouble again and tossing this one out of bounds is 
the quarterback, Latrell Canto. And that'll bring up about a fourth and we'll call it 16. Yeah, I tell you, who put the pressure on the quarterback there was uh, Jameel Atkinson. He did a nice job going after the quarterback, putting pressure on him and causing him to throw the ball out of bounds. And over on punt is bobbled by Ellerby Cundiff and finally able to get to his feet, still on his feet, trying to turn the corner on the far side. He's to the 40, to the 45, and finally taken down, making something out of uh, nothing for Jalen Ellerby Cundiff. Exactly, good reaction. He kind of muffed the um, punt, but he was able to pick it up, shifted his uh, gears and went to the outside, outran some of the um, Durfee players. He did a nice job of uh, recovering. Puts the boxes in good field position. Montero Jr. cutting up the middle and he's got Close to a first down. What Montero Jr. did a nice job. He was going to the outside, didn't see anything on the outside, and cut right back on the inside for a nice gain there, almost a first down. You'll see it right here on the replay. You see he goes to the outside and then quickly cuts back inside. Splits the D and able to get around a number of hilltoppers. Second and one. Give to Rosen Pierre, and he's going to be close. Though the ball popped out, and Durfee's got it. Whistles are going to blow. Yeah, he was down. Oh, it's just the referees didn't get the, down. didn't blow the whistle. It they happened so quickly. But a good call by the referees. Good effort by uh, the running back, but I don't think he made it. You see it right here. Now he's down right there. All of a sudden, the ball comes loose. Good call by the referees, Mad Dog. It's going to be third and one for the Hilltoppers, uh, for the Boxers, excuse me. Montero Jr. in the shotgun, four receiver set, two split to each side. They give to number 36 of the Boxers. He's good for a first down, John Santos. Interesting stat from the Twittersphere, our friend Nate Rollins. Brockton, as a program, has 798 wins. Wow. That's up there. That's up there. That has to be up there, whatever. Two away from 800. Hoping to get those against the big three. As this is going to be a loss. It's Going to be second at about 14. Yeah, nice job by uh, number one there, Devon Williams. He was right on the play there. I think Box has lost a yard or two on the play. Trips to the near side. Dardy Glenn, the lone receiver to the far side. Montero Jr. back to pass. It's a quick screen complete to Paul Mitchell. Mitchell turning upfield is taken down at the 41, and that'll bring up a third and about seven. You'll see on the replay, quickly the quarterback gets the ball out there. Nice job of the Hilltop is uh, covering on the play. Foxes did get about five or six yards on the carry, on the pass. Then four receivers set for the boxers. Montero Jr. in the gun. Back to pass, and it's going to be a short pass complete to Ellerby Cundiff, who diving might be close to the first down. Yeah, Brockton had their offense spread out big time there. You'll see on the replay how spread out they are. First down. And that is enough for a boxer first down, so first and 10. 
what I like from the passing plays is nice short passes, little dink passes to move the ball forward, keep the offense on the field. Terry Jr. still with it. And he's getting to the 24 yard line. I tell you, he paid the price for that nice run. He was hit solidly. He's okay. You'll see it on replay. Nice, nice um, look by Montero to see what the offense had up there. And he just kind of. A couple of nice cuts. Yes. Showing no ill effects of that torn ACL. Still wearing a brace on his left leg. Second and one for the boxer offense. One lone receiver is Cumber uh, LRB Cundiff, rather. And they give to big number 36, John Santos, seeing his first action of the season here tonight. Yes, this is, I think that's Santos' second time he's touched the football in this first early on in his first quarter. Seen a lot of action. Must have had a good practice this week. Montero Jr. under center for this one. Not something we normally see. And it's Santos to the 10, the 5, rumbling, stumbling, bumbling his way. And it's going to be a boxer touchdown. You're actually right, Matt. He was stumbling and bumbling, but with his strength, breaking tackles, and got that ball over the... Um, Goal line for a touchdown. Nice effort by Santos. That was actually oh, Dexter Cumberland. Yes, Cumberland. On the carry, the senior performing here on the. You see it right there, just breaking tackles. Cumberland, as you said, Mad Dog, Lowering stumbling, the and stumbled his way into the end zone. Nice job by Cumberland. Dexter Cumberland. Now it's Max Tobo to attempt the extra point. Put the boxers up. Kick is up, and the kick is good. 7-0 boxers with 2.58 to go into the first quarter. Started off slowly, the boxers kind of finding their offensive rhythm on the last drive. Definitely they found their offensive rhythm, rhythm, uh, rhythm there. You know that first set of um, offensive plays, they was out there through the interception, but they bounced right back. Defense held, made the uh, Hilltoppers punt the football, and the boxers methodically March down the field, and you'll see the uh, cut touchdown one more time by Cumberland, jumping and breaking tackles. Nice run. Uh, I think if instant replay was a thing in high school football, that one might have been spotted at the two or three yard line, but it was Cumberlander close. outstretching his arm as he was falling to the ground. Yeah, and you, you had the referee right down there to see, and um, he saw that he broke the plane of the end zone and gave him the touchdown. Well earned. Now it's Tobo kicking off to the Hilltoppers. Just under three minutes to go in the first half. Brockton up seven to nothing. Brockton took a lot of time off the clock on that drive. A little squibber is picked up by the Hilltoppers and Take another look here at the boxer touchdown as Cumberlander hit there. The knee goes down right there. Still outstretching and falling forward over the goal line. You can see the referee right there on the play. It that was mark close. Him down Because his right knee is there down at right the there. The ball looks like it's at the one. Yeah. Good eyes there, uh, Mad Dog. Four receivers set for the Hilltoppers now. No harm, no foul for the Boxers as they lead 7-0. Quarterback keeper and brought down after a gain of maybe one yard. It's going to be second and nine for 
the Hilltoppers. Tell you what, the, the burgers smell pretty good from up here. Whole spread for homecoming. Flags fly in Latrell Canto is dropped to the backfield for a loss. It'll be a third and about 11. Yeah, most likely that's an offensive uh, penalty. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Brockton's going to decline it. It'll be third and long. Illegal shift on Durfee. Illegal shift called against the Hilltoppers. That'll bring a second down and long. And this is what the Brockton defense wants. They want to push this Hilltopper team back, get them off the field as quick as possible to get their to get Brockton's offense back out on the field. Brockton not able to decline that penalty as it is a formational thing. It'll be second and about 15 to go. Yeah, right now the Brockton defense is pretty spirited. Their offense scored a touchdown. So they're looking to get that football back as soon as possible. We're going to have a timeout called by the Hilltoppers. So Miles, boxer season starting to look up. We're, we stand at one and four, losses to Lexington, Catholic Memorial, BC High, and Severian. Three of those schools, I completely understand the losses. A very wet, windy night here at Marciano Stadium against Catholic Memorial, but there's only one thing that determines playoff eligibility in the MIAA, and that's winning your division. Exactly, so Brockton always has a tough schedule, but the most important schedule is the uh, big three schedule, and that's what's happening tonight. Of course, the playoff format in the MIAA's newer alignment. The last three weeks of the regular season cease to exist. They become the playoffs. Should a team not be eligible for the playoffs, they're just games of football. They mean absolutely nothing. Exactly. Thanksgiving means nothing. Super Bowl, first Saturday of December. Canto keeping it himself, and he's gonna be brought down at the line of scrimmage. Uh, maybe a gain of about one, it'll be third and 14. Yeah, nice coverage by yeah, Brockton's up, defensive backfield. Canto really didn't have anybody to throw to. As you'll see on the replay, he's looking downfield, but he just can't see anybody. You can see him back and forth, then decides to run. But uh, Brockton's defense is right there. Puts uh, Durfee in a tough third down situation. You mentioned Everett up there in the all-time wins in the state. They're currently beating Medford High 28 to nothing in the first quarter. And spinning his way all the way up to the 41 yard line, it'll bring up about a fourth and six. And, and I think, uh, Matt, that Everett has the advantage as far as who they play compared to Brockton's schedule. Brockton has the toughest schedule of anybody in Eastern Massachusetts. They played a Catholic conference and whoever else wants to um, try them out, but Brockton never turns down a tough team. Gotta give out the, uh, gotta give the reigning defending state champs in division one a shout out. The Everett Crimson Tide is this kick, might have been tipped, a yeah. very short kick, bouncing at the 43. Yeah, one of the Brockton boxes might have got their fingertips on that ball to make it a very short kick. Crimson defeating yeah, the Hawks of Severian in the quarter. Division I Super Bowl last year. BC High at the moment is trailing St. John's Prep 7-0 at the end of the first. And I would love to see BC High lose a game. Seven nothing with 12 seconds left. Last play of the first quarter. Montero Jr. looking long and going to fall incomplete intended for Jalen Ellerby Cundiff. And the clock stops with six seconds left. Yeah, I think if Cundiff could have read that pass a little bit better, he could have really came back 
but I think he had a tough time reading it and whereabouts it was. It was underthrown, and he did seem to adjust, but I th he, he adjust, uh, adjusted a little bit too late. But he had the receiver beat by a, a step or two. If that ball could have been hung out there, that would have been a touchdown if he would have caught it. Been the story of the season, under and overthrown passes and drop, drop. Yes. One receiver, the give to Ooh. Rosen, who is cut down in the backfield. It'll be a third and eleven for the boxers. Gee, that was, that was a nice job by number 24, 34 for the uh, Hilltoppers. Clocks hit triple zeros. The first quarter has come to an end. The score is seven to nothing. The Boxers leading the Hilltoppers to determine the playoff fates of the Brockton Boxers. Miles, homecoming, very, very big crowd, marching band in full swing. The atmosphere certainly seems to be helping the Boxers who have spent the last two weeks on the road and the week before that, it was a wet, wild one here against Catholic Memorial. Yeah, you hit it right on the money. The crowd has really pumped up this boxer team, and you could just tell defense, offense, special teams, they're really pumped up. And like you said, it's senior night, homecoming. Um, just a great atmosphere for a football game this evening. The weather, about 50-something degrees out here. The wind is not really blowing. <laughs> Miles, homecoming, talk about your experiences at Brockton High. Well, I'll tell you my experience, because I was class of 74, and we were the first class to go four years in the new Brockton High School. We had guys like Columbo, uh, McAfee, um, a few others I, off, offhand I can't remember, but that, those were powerful teams back in the early 70s. Nobody really wanted to play Brockton back then. Third and 12 for the Boxers. Montero Jr. looking over the middle. He's going to find his man still on his feet to the 30. Cut down at the 25-yard line is Paul Mitchell. And that's what we've been waiting for. Those receivers to hold on to the football. And that was a tough catch. It, the, the, um, Montero did a nice job threading the needle, as you'll see right here. The offensive line gave him a, a lot of time. And nice pass and nice catch. Montero Jr. throwing into a sea of white jerseys. And now back to pass again, looking near to the end zone and incomplete, bobbled. Again, looking for Mitchell. Just a tiny bit overthrown for Mitchell. Nice, nice call though. You'll see it here again on the replay. And again, the story of the season. Oh, he should have had that. Right through his hands. He should have had that. Second and 10 for the Boxers at the 24 yard line. Four receiver set, Montero Jr. in the gun. And now forced to scramble and Montero Jr. is going to be spun around and brought down at the 21 yard line. Boy, he Montero did a nice job making something out of nothing on that play. Uh, good coverage by Durfee. He really had no one to throw to, and you'll see on the replay how he somehow got out of that uh, sticky situation. You can see he had a big hold to the top of the screen. If he just <laughs> realized it a second sooner, it would have been open field. That was a nice run. He put on a burst of energy right here. Right here, I couldn't see who was running the football, but right there, all of a sudden, boom! It's Rosen Pierre again, and lowering the shoulders. Pierre has not been afraid to take some punishment and dish it out all year. Yeah, P Pierre's got that burst of energy, and nobody can catch him when he turns it on. So it's a first and goal for the boxers. Ellerby Cundiff, the man in motion. Montero Jr. on the keeper, heading up the middle, and he's going to fall at about the one yard line. So it'll be second and goal. Brockton 
sending in the jumbo package. <laughs> Extra size up the middle. Yep, they're gonna supersize themselves here on this offensive play. Got some of the big boys in there. I think right now Colombo feels he can he can um, run some power football against this uh, Hilltopper team. You see the tight formation. Give to Ellery Cundiff who walks into the end zone for a Brockton Boxer touchdown with 8.33 to go. Yeah, that was a nice job by the left side of that yeah, offensive line to open up a hole for, uh, did you say uh, Cundiff? We're gonna see right here, it was Dexter Cumberlander, Cumberlander. again. His second of the day. Yeah, nice job by the offensive line there on the left-hand side, opening up a hole for him. Made it look easy. And it brings us to 13 nothing. 8.33 left in the second quarter, and Tobo's kick is good. Make it around 14. Pretty solid performance by the boxer offense so far. Not yeah. something we've seen the last couple of weeks. Yeah, it's, it's really nice to see the boxers move that football up and down the field. We've got 8.33 left in this second quarter. A lot of football left, and Brockton's already got 14 points on the board. And we'll see that uh, replay of the quarterback. Boy, he was upended right there at the one yard line, Montero Jr. by big number 90. A little scary there when you're watching on instant replay. Alex Tavares, the senior on the Hilltoppers with the touchdown saving tackle, but couldn't stop Cumberlander on his second of the day. What would it mean for Jose Montero Jr. to have a touchdown here in front of the home crowd? After all, he's been through on his Line high school line. career, missing the better part of two seasons with ACL injuries. Yeah, he's, he's had a tough um, last two years, but he's always come back. He's a fighter. He's not going down that easy, as shown here in his senior year. We'd like to thank Chartwell School Dining Services for contributing all the refreshments there. So get those raffle tickets by halftime. So Tobo to kick off to the Hilltoppers. 8.33 to go in the first half. Big three, probably with the most interesting format in football. Of course, Brockton plays both Durfee and New Bedford as their final two games of the regular season. But Durfee and New Bedford play each other on Thanksgiving. Wow. After the playoffs. Wow, so uh, boxers gotta wait till the Thanksgiving Day football game between New Bedford and Derby. Well, Bro so the situation is this. Brockton wins their regular season matchups every year. They automatically get into yeah, the playoffs. Right. Yes. Should Brockton go one and one, they still gain entry to the playoffs. That is still a division win because the other teams haven't happened yet. Um, MIAA rules state that if a game hasn't taken place, it's counted as a loss. Ooh, high pitch. So this one is brought down at about the first down marker. So Mad Dog, let me give you a scenario here, see if I'm right. If the boxers come out a, a, a win tonight against Durfee, then they lose against New Bedford. Dependent, then on Thanksgiving dependent Day. Dependent on, it goes by the, the state rankings. The MIAA okay. has this whole power okay. ranking system. But let's just say, again, th they beat New, New Durfee tonight, they lose to New Bedford, then Bert Durfee beats New Bedford in that Thanksgiving game where we beat Durfee. 
Well, it wouldn't matter at that point. The, on Thanksgiving, the playoffs have already taken place. Oh. Boy, MIA really, so double A has it. Down. Oh, there you have Which it. Is You're right. That's right. The playoffs have well already started. Yeah, when we Thanksgiving say Thanksgiving game. is completely meaningless these days, we weren't kidding. No. Here's the replay that last play. Big number 34 with Lucas Rock. Fifty-eight. Now spinning with it, and brought down was number twenty-eight, Eli Conception. Well, that was great pursuit by the Brockton uh, defense. You'll see it right here. One of the big guys for Brockton. I couldn't see who it was, but he chased him down. There you go, right there, staying right with him. Big number ninety-three. It's crunch time out there. Third and eight. Third and seven, rather. As pushing the pile backwards. And it's gonna be spotted at the 49 yard line. That'll bring up a fourth, then we'll call it four. Yeah, it's going to be a punt. Uh, well, fourth and four, they could go for it. They're at the 50. Fourth down. Direct snap to number 34, Lucas Rock. Yeah, Durfee's running some type of wildcat <laughs> offense on this drive. Now, will that keep them on the football field? We'll see right here. Four receivers set, Rock again in the shotgun. Michelle Canto calling a timeout for the Hilltoppers. With 5.38 left in this second quarter. Timeout, Durfee. Yeah, yeah, Durfee wants to talk this over because they know it's a big fourth down play for them. There is plenty of time for the boxers should they take possession back here for them to bring it 50 yards down the field and punch it into the end zone. And you go into halftime with a 21 nothing lead, this game's pretty much over. Yeah, I mean, Durfee's offense really hasn't done anything yet. If Brockton was to get the football back, Durfee might be in trouble. Kanto's pass is going to fall incomplete. Yeah, that pass was a little bit short because of the pressure on the quarterback. You'll see it right here. Boxes were breathing down. down the quarterback. So actually, he threw it even before anybody really got on him. He was just running to the outside. Not a good pass. First and 10 for the Boxers, taking over on downs at the 49 yard line of Durfee. Three receiver set, McCarrick Jr. gives off, or rather keeps it, now throwing over the middle, he's gonna be picked off for the second time today. Yeah, that wasn't a good pass. He had a man open, he just overthrew him. And I mean, the, the safety didn't have to do nothing but wait for the football. Remind the folks that tonight is You'll see it here on replay. Montero Jr., he had time back there, good protection, just overthrew his man. You see him right there. Again, the safety, all he had to do was wait for the football to come right to him. Antonio Fonseca having it delivered right into his bread basket. Yep, I'm sure Montero would like to have that pass back. We've got a timeout boxes. So 14 nothing, 522 left in the second quarter. Montero Jr. has 
for tonight is Ed DeCruz thrown and staff appreciation night. Two interceptions in the first uh, half. Not the start he, was, he would like to have on his final Marcus. home game here at Marciano Stadium. Yeah, now if Durfee wants to make that Marcus turnover Marcus count, the they need to hold on to this football for a couple of first downs to get some of that time off the clock. 5.22 left in this second quarter. They do not want to go four and out and give the boxes back the football with plenty of time left. The staff of the Brockton Public Schools being honored here. Not only the homecoming, it's staff appreciation night here at Marciano Stadium. Durfee with a fresh set of downs. Canto looking long, and he's going to overthrow his man, but calling for a flag is the receiver. He's not going to coax the laundry out of the pocket of the officials. No, that was just good coverage by the defensive backs for um, Brockton. Looked like he could have been possibly double covered on the play. So uh, good read by the Brockton defense in their backfield. By 15 to go, second and 10. We're gonna take another look at that incomplete pass. Canto. Oof. Overthrowing his man. Uh, he might have a, a case for a pass interference there, but it was borderline. Keeping it himself and lowering the shoulder. Gain of about four. Hey, Canto's having a tough time finding his receivers, and he doesn't mind dishing out punishment. He's a big, healthy kid. You can see right there. And like you said, he lowers the shoulder when he knows he's going to get tackled. So it's a third and five for. Hilltoppers trip to the near side. Brockton jumping and flags do fly. Yeah, I think that's going to be offsides boxes. And it won't matter if it is against the boxes because the uh, Hilltoppers got the, got the uh, you'll see it right there. They might call it a false start. And they're going to give it to the uh, Hilltoppers. Flag on Brockton. And I see what you're saying on the replay. It was, a little, it was close. But the center, he just snapped that football as uh, the Brockton defender was in the gray area. out is going to be brought a yard north of the line of scrimmage by number 28 Eli Conception the junior and yeah, number 58 also for boxes who is he AJ Walker jr one of the linebackers and actually he's a he's a lineman he's like I can see him on the left hand side there of the ball on uh, center of the ball. Now he's moving over to the right. So he's one of the defensive tackles for this boxer team. Clock running, 313 left in the second quarter. Second and nine, five receiver set for the Hilltoppers. Canto rolling out to the far side. He's going to jump and throw across his body. Well out of bounds and one of the assistant coaches taking out a water cooler on the far side. Yeah, another case of the box is just not giving uh, the quarterback, Canto, any open receivers. We're gonna take a look. That play didn't develop at all for the Hilltoppers. Oh, there it is wow, right he there, took that out coach two or three. on the far side. He took out two water coolers <laughs> and a bench. 
on his way, attempting to make a very athletic play. If he made the catch, it would be impressive. Shout out to our replay tech tonight, Mike the Postman Simmons. So I tell you, he's delivering tonight. Yet another delivery to the viewers of Brockton. It's a four receiver set with trips to the far side. Canto again jumping, throwing over his shoulder. And they're gonna call it a catch. Wow. And a first down at the 40 yard line. You can see Canto has that, got that habit when, he, when he's running a little bit, when he throws it, you'll see it on the replay, he kind of jumps right there. Kind of a strange way. Oh, nice catch. One-handed. Referee was right there. He's going to say he caught it. Inbounds. Number six, Franklin De Silva, the senior. Keeps this drive alive with 2.53 on the clock. there's when he has possession. He might have been out of bounds, but they rule it a catch, so first down. Very athletic play nonetheless. Is now getting stood up at the 38 yard line of the boxers. Yeah, nice tackle by number 22. David Belsius. Very good. Good, good. Second and six, or long six, as this one's going to be whistled down. <coughs> I don't think the receiver was quite ready for that pass. That was very quick, quick release by the quarterback. And his receiver really was just turning around. That would have been a tough catch. Oh, it was a tough catch if he would have caught it. So it's a third in a long six, we'll call it seven. For the Hilltoppers trying to waste out the remainder of this second quarter. The Hilltoppers will receive the opening kick to the second half. Four receiver set here for Durfee. Canto in the gun. And a false start. We'll back the Hilltoppers up to third and about 12. Boy, it was two or three Hilltoppers moving on that play. So some miscommunication on the snap count. It's gonna be third and 12 for the Hilltoppers. Canto back to pass, and again jumping, and this one going to be complete, but brought down at the line of scrimmage. Oh, and brings up be, uh, fourth down. Fourth and 12. Canto definitely has this habit. He kind of brings his feet together, jumps, and throws across his body. Yeah, now the last person that play, uh, here we are in replay. There was an NFL quarterback, Matt, before your time, that played for the Minnesota Vikings, and his name was Joe Cap. And Joe Cap sometimes would jump when he would pass. Not all the time, but sometimes he would jump. Four down. Over the, uh, looking at over to these big linemen, and he'd do one of them jump passes. And that was back in the 70s, early 70s. Canto rolling out again, jumping. This one going to be thrown into the boxer's sideline and complete, and another turnover on downs. It'll be first and 10 for the boxers at their own 42. But I tell you, the Hilltoppers did a nice job of keeping the football for a little bit, trying to prevent the uh, uh, Brockton offense from coming back on the field, but the air, uh, Brockton's offense is back on the field with one minute, 53 seconds left. They have a chance to do something.
First and 10 for the boxers, 42 yard line, plenty of time. Almost a full two minutes for Montero Jr. in the boxer offense, four receivers set. Montero Jr. gives off to Pierre Rosen. And he stood up at the line of scrimmage. We'll give him about a half a yard. We'll still call it second and 10. Yeah, Durfee did a nice job there, tripping up the running back. Brock looks like going into that quick offense. No huddle offense. That's trips to the near side is Darty Glenn Mitchell and Ellerby Cundiff. Montero Jr. back to pass, rolling out to the near sideline. Gonna keep it himself and be Whoa. pushed out of bounds. And there's gonna be a flag for unnecessary roughness against number eight, Chase Charves. Yeah, that's just a, a dumb mental mistake by the Durfee Hilltop of player. You'll see it right here. He was in the out of bounds. He was on, on the, the white paint. Yeah, on the white paint. And this guy's gonna come up and push him. And he didn't push him lightly either. So he's out of bounds right there. Boom. And then just. Yeah, that's that was unnecessary mental error there because now you give the, um, the boxes 15 more yards downfield into Hilltop territory. It's a good call by the officials, unnecessary roughness against Charves. First and 10 for the boxers, Montero Jr. Quick pass complete. And brought down at the 31 yard line. Paul the, Mitchell on the reception. Yeah, the pass was a nice touch pass by Montero Jr. Just floated it right over there to him. Montero Jr. looking over the middle, and he's going to throw it between two receivers. You know, I noticed Montero Jr.'s had a tough time throwing the ball over the middle to his receivers. Seems to be throwing it way too high for them to catch. Needs to make some adjustments on that pass, on that pass route when the receivers go down the middle of the field. A little bit too much air on the football. Third and three now for the boxers. Trips to the near side again. Montero Jr. pitching out to Rosen Pierre, who's got a first down and more. Still on his feet, and he's going to walk into the end zone for a boxer touchdown. That was a beautiful decision on Montero Jr., the quarterback, to pitch it out to his running back and let him do his thing out there. He just outran the defense, basically outran the defense. Rosen Pierre adding one for the boxers as we take a look at the latest touchdown, a pitch out. Looked like he might be shoved out of bounds right there. Able to turn the corner and. That was speed. Speed and good leaning. <laughs> leaning back inbounds. Lean back. Lean back. That was Fat Joe. Lean back. Back in the golden age, as Tobob is going to start before the ball was snapped. It's Oh, Brockton might have to re-kick it. Illegal shift against the boxers. Illegal shift as Tobo was moving the before the ball was snapped. It'll be a re-kick. This one is going to be short and no good. So 20 to nothing the score. Boxers on top of Derby with 41 seconds left in the first half. Yeah, that was a bad snap. It was low. The um, holder tried his best to get that ball down. You'll see it right here on replay. Good angle right there. You see, it was good, nice job by the uh, kicker to, to even get it up there just short of the goal post. Who's our kicker, number one? Le Lendro? It's uh, Max Tobo, the kicker on the boxers. Well, that particular one, it was it was number number one who, who tried to kick it. They switched. They, they switched, switched numbers. Oh, 
Okay, there you go. Number seven with it being dragged down. Flags fly in from about 20 yards away. A.B. Medrano with the return. I think they might call a horse collar here. Folks, a reminder after the game over at the Brockton High Auditorium at 9.30 is the first annual comedy fundraiser featuring Paul Narduzzi. Tickets will be sold at the door. And this just in, seniors, seems if you show an ID, you're allowed to get in. As long as you pay for a ticket, seniors, if you show your ID, you can buy a ticket at the door. This is going to be a horse collar against the boxers, 315 yards to start a face mask. Rather, excellent work by guys in the truck 15 yards added on to the end of the kick the end of the return rather and now Canto jumping again throwing long and well into the derpy sideline yeah he forced outside a lot of pressure on him Twenty six seconds to go now in the second quarter, second and ten for the Hilltoppers. Five receiver set. Canto with a quick screen pass complete and running ahead for a gain of about three. Was big number twenty five. Two seconds left. Brockton's going to burn a timeout. Or Derpy, rather, yeah, calling this. Derpy calls a timeout. Timeout. Why, I Why? don't know. Yeah, that's a good question. Could have called it about 20 seconds ago. I don't know. Well, folks. In the next two seconds, barring a touchdown, of the Brockton High School Marching Band Halftime Show, it's a good one. I'm sure it is. They always put on a great show for our fans here at Rocky Marciano Stadium. Marching on Colombo Field. Five receivers set, Canto in the gun. Going to keep it himself. The time will run out, and Canto goes down for the yard loss. The first half has come to an end. 20 to nothing. The boxers over the hilltop with Miles. It hasn't been flawless, but a pretty solid performance by Brockett in the first half. Yeah, you said a solid performance. Nice to see the offense clicking. The receivers have caught some footballs. Running back, running game has been A, A plus today. And the defense has done a good job putting a lot of pressure on the Hilltoppers. 20 to nothing, boxers over the Hilltoppers at halftime. Stay tuned, it's the Brockton High School Marching Band, Majorettes, Color Guard, and Halftime Dancers with a halftime show. And then right after that, it's the second half of action between the Derpy Hilltoppers and the Brockton Boxers.
Let's hear it for the Brockton High School marching band, majorettes, color guard, halftime dancers. Unbelievable. Great job. Boxer proud right there. Football fans of all ages, welcome back into Rocky Marciano Stadium for second half action between the Durfee Hilltoppers and your Brockton Boxers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside my broadcast partner, the one, the only, big game Miles Jackson. Miles, 20 to nothing coming into the second half. And Brockton, while not a perfect half, a very solid performance thus far. Very solid, especially for the defense. They have kept the Hilltoppers off the scoreboard, done a good job with them, and I, I don't see much changing in the second half because now Hilltop is going to start getting a little tired on defense. Um, their offense really hasn't clicked yet, but we'll see early on in this third quarter what the Hilltoppers might do. First and 10 for the Toppers at the 40-yard line. Four receivers set, man in motion, and Kato's going to keep it himself and not get anything, so it'll be second and 10 for the Hilltoppers. Yeah, the uh, Brockton defensive line is really starting to manhandle that offensive line of uh, Durfee's. Again, I say Durfee doesn't have a big offensive line. So I said at the beginning of the, the game, Brockton's defensive line should take advantage if they can, and they definitely took advantage of this uh, offensive line of Durfee Hilltoppers. Miles, we were talking about it a little bit earlier. One in four, the record of the Brockton Boxers. The playoffs for all intents and purposes, start tonight. Yes, it does. This, like you said, very important game this evening. Brockton had to come out in a positive attitude with a lot of energy, and that's exactly what they've done so far. Canto is going to put this one into the Derpy sideline. Very interesting how uh, Derpy Hilltoppers, went most of the time when they pass, they go to the to the. Uh, left side of that offensive line it seems like it'd be easier if they come over to the right side and have their quarterback Canto throw the football so it's a third and ten for Durfee ten minutes left in the third quarter Five receivers set for the Hilltoppers. Kanto in the shotgun. Throwing over the middle, a high pop fly, and it's going to fall incomplete. Incomplete pass will bring up fourth down. Well, Brockton's defense left uh, off where they started in that end of that second quarter. stifling this uh, Hilltopper offense. Another one is going to, that is punt, is going to be touched down at around the 21 yard line. Very successful last few drives for the boxer offense led by Jose Montero Jr. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see in the second half what their offense is gonna do. Will they carry? Fourth, what they um, did in that first and second quarter, or will they stall? I believe they'll have a good second half because they have the momentum right now. And the longer this uh, hilltop or defense stays on the field, the more likely the uh, boxers will score again. So first and 10 for the boxers from the 22 yard line officially. Two receivers just split out from the line. The end around give. And still on his feet all the way to the 50 and brought down at the 46 yard line. It was Jalen Ellerby Cundiff. She has a nice, nice piece of running right there. If he could have let his blocker do the Run job out there, he, he might have went all the way. I, but I guess he thought he could uh, outrun or 
beat the tackle. You'll see right here, he has the quarterback ready to block for him, but. He went about 30 yards east and west. Yeah. Nice replay there by the uh, booth. Confused Durfee defense. They were all kind of bunched around in about five square yards. Yeah, Brock did a nice fake. And fa just about faked out the whole defense of uh, Durfee. It's going to be second and six for the boxers. Get the family here. Mrs. Jackson <laughs> paying us a visit up north in the booth. Is chugging all the way down to the 39 yard line for first down is Rosen Pierre. Rosen Pierre for another boxer first down. First and 10 from the 39. You can see on the replay. Yeah, that was a nice piece of running right there. Look at him. He's just dragging defenders. Man's going to need a new jersey. Yeah, nice job running there by uh, Pierre. Montero Jr. in the shotgun. Rolling out and his little chip pass falls incomplete. incomplete Intended pass. for Ellery Cundiff. Boxes again, marching down this field, taking time off the clock, 7.56 to go here in the third quarter. The longer they keep this derpy defense on the field, the tough it's gonna get for them. Flag's thrown. Flag on the play. It is. Tumberlander on the carry. And Brockton knows that this one's coming back. Yeah, and that's one of the few mistakes the boxers have made this evening, which is a good sign for the boxers. Holding oh, against holding Brockton, Brockton, so it That'll will bring up. about a second and 20. Clock rolling with 7.45 to go. So second and 24, Montero Jr. in the boxer offense. Two receivers, one split to each side. Montero Jr. under center. And passing is going to be complete to big number 93, who hops his way all the way down to the 38 yard line. Gee, nice play right there. Unfortunately, uh, Sunny Oak and Lola. Third and long now for the boxes. It's going to be third and nine. The OT formation. That run uh, just fourth a few down. yards north for Cumberlander, so it'll be fourth and we'll call it seven. Yeah, big fourth down for the boxes. It'll see where they're really coming from they can execute this play and get a first down. Miller be in motion, he splits to the far side. 
Terra Jr. back to pass on fourth down. He's going to end up keeping it himself, charging ahead, brought down at the 31 yard line. He'll be about a yard and a half shy of the first down and Durfee will take over on down. Yeah, that was a nice job by Durfee. You'll see here on the replay, he makes the tackle just before he gets to the first down. No one to throw to. Actually, there was a good rush on the quarterback. He had no choice but to run up the field. Almost got a first down, but not quite. So a good, good um, stance by the uh, Durfee Hilltoppers defense. First and 10 for the Hilltoppers now at the 31 yard line. Beautiful chilly evening out here at uh, Rocky Marciano Stadium. Boy, he was hit, nowhere to go, and he was just clobbered. Folks, this just in. The price has been considerably reduced for uh, the You mentioned a beautiful night here for football. It is a balmy like 53 degrees. Yeah, you could say that, balmy. Winds all seniors. With gusts of about four miles an hour to the southeast, 92% humidity rate and a 50% dew point, so the air is moist. Very moist. And minus being just a little bit chilly, perfect night. Perfect night for football. Four forty-five to go now in the third quarter. Well, third and long for the Hilltoppers. It's going to be third and ten. Boy, they really got to pull some out of their hat to get to the uh, first down marker here. They haven't had a lot of uh, luck this evening. Five receivers set, Canto receiving the snap and the shotgun. Nowhere to go with it, is going to again throw this one into the Derpy sideline, and that'll bring up about a fourth and 10. Mad Dog, have you ever seen a quarterback throw the ball out of bounds so much as uh, Canto no. has? I mean, he literally, he's thrown the ball more out of bounds than he has to his receivers. I mean, give credit I've to the Brockton it. defense. I've seen a soccer ball purposely kicked out of bounds. The clock continues to run. Get. Cat's got your tongue on that one. You might think he's playing the wrong sport. The clock continues to run while, while the ball's out of bounds. So it's 20 to nothing. Boxers on top of the Hilltoppers. 4.03 to go in the third quarter. Yeah, this is uh, boy, it's fourth down and long. It's definitely a punting, punting situation for the Hilltoppers. As you notice, Mad Dog, when the Hilltoppers punt, they're in a formation like they're going to go for it. It isn't like the standard where the punt puncher stays back. Now, this time they're going to standard formation for a punter. It's still a little close. This is only about five yards back from the line of scrimmage. And this one almost blocked. Yeah, very close to being blocked. And it's Ellerby Cundiff putting a nice return together to the 40 to the 37 yard line. Jalen Ellerby Cundiff with a very nice return for the boxers. Yeah, he really picked his spots to get down to the field. Nice return, as you said, Matt. Nice uh, return. First and 10 for the boxers from the 37 yard line. 351 to go in the third quarter. Give to Rosen Pierre, still chugging along, has a gain of about seven. 
It'll be second and three with a Hilltopper slow to get up. Yeah, he was one of the victims trying to tackle um, Cundiff. As you'll see on the replay, he's just barreling over players, dragging players. Excellent job holding onto that ball, as you can see. Yeah. Almost had it ripped out. And when we run the house. That is enough for a first down for the boxers. Brockton fans are rocking the house here, Mad Dog. Cheerleaders have invaded the stands here. <coughs> Press box is shaking as Rosen Pierre runs up ahead, gain of about three. That's Thomas O'Brien who has stood in a quarterback for Jose Montero Jr. And with the score 20 nothing, you want to save Montero Jr. I think this is a good move to put um, O'Brien in there. A move we've seen the last couple of weeks, perhaps not quite soon enough. Yeah. Good timing here for the senior quarterback, Thomas O'Brien. Flags fly Flag in the play. from behind the line of scrimmage. Folks, if we could direct your attention to the press box, we have a Brock and High legacy in the house. A member of the 1961 Brock and High cheerleading squad, Lucy Meridio. Give her a round of applause. Hey, Lucy, thanks for coming out for us. Alumni. Member of the 1960. Wow. Cheerleading. She looks pretty good. For so someone graduating in 1961, that was a long time ago. I thought it was a long time ago when I graduated in 1974. I thought it was a long time ago when <laughs> I graduated. <laughs> what year? 2011. Please. Getting up there. <laughs> Pitch out to Rosen Pierre, still on his feet to the 25. Another flags fly, fly in. Yeah, that might be uh, holding or. Folks, we're about to announce the winner of the raffle prizes. Definitely going to be on the offense. You need to go to the raffle table to pick up your winning. The deluxe lottery ticket basket goes to one and only Donna Kenny. The dinner gift certificate. With wine and lottery tickets goes to Karen. Flag Watt. against the boxers, it'll be a second and about 13. Brockton High head coach. And now they're going to spot a second and 11. Chris Cunningham. With a minute and 28 seconds left in this third quarter. Gift certificate to Cape Cod. Plus Academy English teacher, Beth Sinclair. Ooh, that was a nice shoestring Get tackle because uh, the boxer running back looked like he Get had a little room there, a little space that was opened up by the right-hand side of that offensive line. But from behind, one of the Hilltoppers made a nice Lula shoestring Rose tackle. Mike Silva. Brockton going to call a timeout here. And the fourth and really a long nine for Brockton. With school supplies, Lisa Avar, Divar. So go to the raffle table to pick Interesting up Interesting matchup winning. in the state right now is St. John's Prep and BC High tied up at 13 at the end of the third quarter. Sounds like a good game. And don't forget, once again, the comedy show at 9.30. Great way to end the night. Go over to Brockton High and get some first-class comedy from Paul Nardizzi. We've seen him on Comedy Central. 
He's been on the Conan O'Brien show. Any donation gets you in the door. Rockton lined up to go for it here. Trips to the near side, and it's O'Brien in the shotgun flanked by Rose and Pierre. O'Brien back to pass on fourth and 10. Ooh, nice catch. They're going to rule out a catch at the 12 yard line. First down for Brockton. Great concentration by the Brockton receiver. Made a nice sliding catch. You'll see it here on the replay. Nice pass by O'Brien. That was Jalen Miller Recundiff on the reception. Jalen Recundiff, Miller Recundiff for the catch. Now flags can Flying fly, a ball start against stop. the boxers. First and 15. Yeah, this, this deep into the football game, you really don't expect uh, um, the boxers to jump off sides. When they have the football, they should be clicking right now. Brian gives to Pierre, who has a lane on the outside, turns the corner, and walks into the end zone for a boxer touchdown. Pure speed, hey, speed kills, because one touchdown. of the defensive players had an angle on him, and uh, Cundiff just uh, went right around him with the speed. Or was that Rosen Pierre? Rosen Pierre on Let's the see. carry. Yes, it was. Yeah, it's his second touchdown of the day. Yeah, you can see it right about there. He just puts the speed on number 15 and scampers into the end zone. Some of the some of the fans, just students, just ask us who's Rockton High playing. Got to know your division. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is the end of, end of the third quarter. You don't know who we're playing yet? Five seconds left in the third quarter. Call is delay a game against Brockton. Delay a game against Brockton will back up the two-point conversion attempts. Now be a 10-yard attempt. O'Brien looking to pass, and he's going to overthrow Dardy Glenn. And a two-point conversion, no good. 46 nothing. five seconds left in the third quarter. Five seconds to go in the third That was a nice drive by the Brockton Boxers. They took some time off the clock. You only got five seconds left in this third quarter, but nice drive by the Boxers to put six more points on the board. Still a lot of fans still out here, uh, Matt. Members of the halftime show enjoying the music of the band. Well, next week is a big week in big three divisional action. Tuesday night right here at Marciano Stadium. Brockton High boys soccer team looks to wrap up their divisional championship with one of the most highly anticipated soccer matches perhaps in MIAA state history as the New Bedford Thank Whalers come to town and then Friday night we'll go down to New Bedford brave the cold yeah because New Bedford's right there by the water absolutely as the boxers look to Win the division and advance the MIAA playoffs. I remind you, follow us on Twitter at Brockton Channel. Live tweeting all the football games. We will be posting the boys, girls, and football brackets as soon as they are published.
Talk in channel. If you want to talk to us, hashtag BCA Sports. This one overthrown, second and 10 for the Hilltoppers. Gee, that pass was thrown before the receiver and turned around and looked for it. I think because of the pressure on the quarterback, he had no, um, no choice but to throw it quickly before he got sacked. And I'll kill it this time. Yeah, Holtz a great job. Yeah, the Hilltoppers have put, them, put themselves in a passing situation when they do have the football. They haven't had a lot of luck this evening passing the football. This one popped up into the incomplete pass. It'll bring up third down. Boxer bench, third and 10 for the Hilltoppers. Brockton's defense putting pressure on the quarterback every time that he drops back. Again, throws the ball out of bounds. Third and 10 for the Hilltoppers. Trips to the near side. Canto throwing again across his body and stepping out of bounds at the 26 yard line. Won't be quite enough for. Out of bounds at the 26. Well, let's yard watch line. this replay. At the end of this Touchdown. replay, one of the Brockton boxes took down the receiver with one arm. You'll see. Close line, yes. Close line, right there. There you go. That was Dexter Cumberlander. Nice job by our tech crew. Down in the truck. All-star crew is this one is going to again fall incomplete. That's another turnover on downs for the Hilltoppers. Here's the clothesline by Cumberlander. Ooh. Wind that back again. Watching number 30 right there. Wow. Just, just destroyed him. Leveled him. Just destroyed him. Boy, these um, defense guys, they've been going to the weight room, pumping them arms up. I want to thank the cast and crew for tonight's festivities, doing a phenomenal job, as always. At the helm, the, the captain over. of our ship tonight, Paul Mandeville. Next to him, with all the down. phenomenal instant replays you've been enjoying, Mike the Postman Simmons, yet another delivery to the viewers of Brockton. On time. Next to him, J.D. Wetters, manning the score bug. Fantastic job, as always, up top. Braving the cold, we've got Danny Still, senior and junior, Aaron Tebow, Rob Curry, the seven-time award-winning director and producer and Emmy-nominated Newbie Ratto. Newbie's all, always around the action. Always. <laughs> always. <laughs> Even when he's not doing, doing anything, anything. He's, he's always around he's the action. Supervising. Yes. <laughs> Whoa. And of course, you are listening to the sultry sounds. The sultry Jack sounds of big down. game Miles Jackson and myself, the Mad Dog Pat Nelson. If you guys are wondering what exactly Newbie is doing tonight, he's inspecting the food to make sure it's safe for the rest of us to eat doing an excellent job inspecting it. 
his mouth and tongue say everything is delicious. Ten minutes left in this one, 26 nothing. The boxers on top is, barring a few small miracles, they'll wrap up their first win since week two. Chop down there was number 44 of the boxers, Nathaniel DeFarius. Yeah, nice job by DeFarius, uh, one of the fullbacks getting his chance and held on to that football. As you'll see, nice catch and head it right upfield. Catches the football before he heads upfield and just barrels in. Nice job by the fullback. Darius gets the call again. And he's got close to a first down. And they will award a first down. And that's good enough for, for Demarius. I like, I like what the first Brockton down. coaching staff is doing right now. They got some of their second tier players in there, giving them a chance to uh, get their feet wet. You saw the um, seniors that'll be leaving. That's a big group. That is a big Very group. Very big group, including their two quarterbacks, Jose Montero Jr. and Thomas O'Brien. Man behind two of the first two boxer touchdowns, Dexter Cumberlander. A group of seniors as well. The band's really getting down this evening. Um, it's got me moving. a second and a long six for the boxers. A pitch out as we have another new quarterback in there. Number 11, Michael Norman Jr. And the junior Jr. quarterback getting some action as he presumably will be the one taking over the reins next year. That was smart then to get him in there. See what he can do. Looks like a penalty against the boxers. It's gonna be holding against the boxers. You'll see here on a replay. Call is holding against Brockton. Right there. Number bring up second down and long. Number 93, I think, was the culprit on the play holding. Clock running, 7.40 and counting. The Brockton's second win of the season. <laughs> Another flag is Norman throws this one complete and turning into the end zone is Sunny Oak and Lola, but there are flags thrown. Well, I tell you, if even if it's brought back, that was a great, great effort by the quarterback he, um, he was almost sacked and somehow got out of the situation and threw a strike to his receiver out there for the touchdown, but it's coming back. Catch made by number 93, Dimitri Doraville. And you hate to see that happen when you got the second tier plays in there. Here we'll see it on the replay. Watch how the quarterback gets out of a tough situation right there and throws a nice pass. Dimitri Dornville on the reception that is negated and it's now a second and 19. Miller Recundiff, the lone wide out to the near side. Norman hands the ball to Rosen Pierre as another flag. Yeah, another flag yeah, too many flags, too many flags. Oh, great game. game. 
game everyone's watching. St. John's Prep and BC High still tied at 13. Just under seven minutes left. Couldn't St. quite John's see where the, excuse me, Matt, couldn't quite see where the holding was. Oh, false start. Call a false start on number 75, moving his arm right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Tell you, Mandeville and his crew are right on the money down there. Norman splitting out to the near side, looking over the middle, complete to Dornville, and carrying the entire Durfee <laughs> Hilltoppers team with him, gets down to the two, two and a half yard line. Yeah, the crowd really liked that one when he started carrying players and trying to get into the end zone. That was Gronkowski-like. Yes, it was. Definitely was. Let's see it on the replay here. Again, nice job by the quarterback. Norman Jr. finds his open man. There's one, two, three, four, four five, five, six and seven come in to finally bring Dorenville down. Seven out of 11 Hilltoppers had to be included on that. Quarterback sneak, puts it in. For the boxes, nice job by Norman Jr. That'll bring up second and goal. Oh, he, I thought he scored. Right. Second and. And the call is touchdown. Oh, I th that's what I thought it was a it touchdown. A touch There's yeah. a lot of confusion going on. It is a touchdown for the boxers, Michael Norman. Tommy Let's see. But it's O'Brien finding the hole. I mean, he's in the end zone. Referees a little confused, miscommunicating between each other. Well, the confusion stems from the arms never went up and to signal a touchdown. There's good. never any doubt that O'Brien got in. I mean, we saw it from up here. Re referees are right down there on the field. See it one more time. Different Watch angle. 12 right there, sneaks through the hole and he gets in. I mean, is look at you get no 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 um touchdown sign by the referee there. The arms never went up. No. You got five officials. Right. And not one of them realized there was a touchdown. Five oh two on the clock. Thirty two to nothing. Boxers on top. And the boxers will kick off again. Poocher is returned by number five, who is ripped down. David Montero on the return for the Hilltoppers. We'll take a look at that return again. He almost broke it right there, but luckily number 33 for the boxes, Ryan Santos. It's Franklin De Silva on the return, number six. out and picking it up is number 28 still on his feet to the 40 the 35 the 30 all the way down to the 23 yard line is number 28 Eli Conception long run by number 28 Eli Conception gave the Hilltoppers the first well, that was down. a nice run as he uh, fumbled the football on the snap you'll see it here 
little miscue on the snap. Quarterback should have had it, but he did a nice job recovering and scampering down the field into box the territory. And he paid the price for running that football downfield as they tagged him. It's first and 10 for the Hilltoppers. Trailing 32 to nothing. Three fifty-five and counting. Fox is looking to get their second win of the season. Second and about five. For the Hilltoppers. So we're just looking to get some points on the board here, maybe for lack of embarrassment. Pitch out to Conception. Still on his feet, it'll be close to a first down and I think they're gonna give it to him. Nice effort there by the running back. Carried by Conception, will give the He cut up field just at the right down. time to get that first down. Deep inside Boston territory. This is going to be a first down for Durfee. Trying to get their first points on the night. Again, trailing 32 0. 240 to go. Trips to the far side. Quarterback Woo. sneak and he's not going anywhere. His conception was cut yeah, down in the back yeah, of the field. Joshua Boards. Bordes. Got him by the ankles and upended him. minutes left in the game. Let's go. Let's go. Don't forget. 150 the and counting. Show over Brockton about nowhere. 120 and counting. Under a minute to go here, 55 seconds. Conception, the man in motion, he gets the pitch out. Cutting to the far side, trying to turn the corner and is not able to do so. Brought down after a gain of about fourth three. Down. Now brings up a fourth in about seven. Yeah, that was a, a long pitch out. I don't know what Durfee thought that they could outrun the Brockton defense because Brockton was right on that with their speed. and seven to go for the Hilltoppers. Quarterback keeper is not gonna have enough and the boxers and that's the end of the game. will not have another opportunity as time expires. The final the score, 32 nothing. Miles, you want a statement win going into the games that determine your playoff fate? You can call this one. Out of the end zone. So it's the boxers 32, the Hilltoppers nothing, Miles. What do the boxers have to do in this week of practice before they go down to New Bedford 
in the final game of the regular season. Well, they're gonna have to really practice their execution. Well, they wanna to execute home, because right that'll be the key going, going into New Bedford into enemy territory. Great rivalry with New Bedford. Anybody can win that football game. So Broxton got to execute and make sure, make few mistakes and their offensive line as well as their defensive line have to have to go at, go at that other, that um, New Bedford line hard. The five touchdowns, two for Dexter Cumberlander, two for Rosen Pierre, and the final one, a quarterback sneak by Thomas O'Brien. The final score again, 32 to nothing. The Brockton Boxers with a huge divisional win against the Durfee Hilltoppers. For everyone here at BCA Sports, my broadcast partner, the one the only big game, Miles Jackson, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and we will see you next game.